Hi everyone, it's Tracy Learn. And Peter Murray. Good afternoon, Tracy. Afternoon, Peter. So tell me, what is Ethereum? This is a question that we hear all the time now. Everybody's asking us, what is Ethereum? So we decided we better answer that question. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, there's been so much uh, news about Ethereum of late, and uh, there's a lot of excited people out there. So Ethereum is actually an open source decentralized computing platform that runs smart contracts. Well, yes, um, I think, you know, people think that uh, Ethereum is, uh, whereas Bitcoin is, is developed as a currency, um, Ethereum was actually developed as uh, being a, a the, the world, as they say, the, the, the world supercomputer, a decentralized computing system um, running all over on computers all over the world, um, performing um, all kinds of uh, tr transactions and uh, calculations, um, executing smart contracts. And, um, you know, smart contracts are contracts that are pre-programmed on the Ethereum network to do, do certain things when, um, you know, certain parameters are met. Yes. So, um, an actual, actually, without the possibility of downtime, censorship, fraud, or even third-party interference. So, that's, that's right, pretty good. Because, that's correct, because also, the, 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 you know, the, um, the contracts are peer-to-peer. Um, -peer. So, for instance, you've got two big companies that are both running on the network. They could interact with each other without any interference from anybody else. Um, and this is why Ethereum is um, so exciting for developers and um, very much used... Um, for developing all kinds of new um, applications. Yes. So these smart contracts actually run on a blockchain, which is a shared global infrastructure. Yes, the blockchain is a, you know, a, a, is a concept we understand now well. It's the same uh, type of uh, technology that, that uh, Bitcoin uses. But just to let people know that the Ethereum blockchain is a different blockchain. Ethereum has its own blockchain and it runs separately from uh, the Bitcoin um, blockchain. Yes, it does. Um, however, they're saying here that um, it moves value, it represents the ownership of property, and the, the other good thing is no middleman or counterparty risk. Well, the thing is you don't have a, an, a, a third party that's in control of your transaction. Just like with Bitcoin, if, you, if I send money from your wallet, from my wallet directly to your wallet, and your wallet is kept by you on your computer, there's no a third party involved, right? This is right. the same thing with, with, with Ethereum. We can now do a contractual um, arrangement and that contractual arrangement cannot be interfered with by anybody else. So again, you know, um, this, is, this, this is one of the beauties of, of a blockchain um, if it works peer to peer. And this is exactly what Ethereum does. And this is the reason why so many businesses are getting involved and uh, pretty excited about this. Pretty excited. And as you can see, your Ethereum wallet can be used, whereas your Bitcoin wallet can only be used to store, uh, to, to send value. Your Ethereum wallet can actually be used to, to, to write uh, messages, to, um, you know, to execute smart contracts, and to store cryptocurrency. So it's got more use than um, the Bitcoin um, uh, blockchain. So let's just go right back to the very beginning. I mean, how did this all start? Um, and um, somebody by the name of Vitalik Buterin actually wrote a white paper in uh, late 2013 uh, when it was, well, that was when it was revealed. Yes, Vitalik used to be a, um, uh, he worked um, um, for, Bitcoin, for the Bitcoin um, Foundation and was very heavily involved as a Bitcoin investor. And I think he's still involved in Bitcoin as well although not officially, um, but um, he uh, uh, started um, um, Ethereum. Yes, and then, of course, the software project was uh, developed e early in 2014 by Ethereum Switzerland. That's right, and um, so they set up a, a company in Switzerland and also a foundation, and, uh, yeah, it's a non-profit um, organization, and so <coughs> Ethereum is a little bit different than Bitcoin, where Bitcoin belongs to nobody, and is controlled by nobody, there is an element of control in Ethereum where you can actually pick up the phone and call a person and talk to them. And for people developing contracts and stuff like that, this is also maybe a little bit more comforting, even though it's not totally, um, uh, you know, out of the, out of, um, the reach of, th of a third party. This third party at least can tell you about software updates and can help you if something goes wrong on your, on your blockchain. And if you're developing software, you might need some support. Yes, absolutely. 
You know, so this all sounds like good news. And then there was the DAO. The DAO, as they say. <laughs> the Tao of the DAO. <laughs> yes, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Well, this was something invented by, by, by Ethereum that you could uh, create an uh, organization like this. And some people actually then created one. And uh, it had smart contracts developed on the platform and was going to invest in all kinds of cryptocurrency projects and stuff like that. They crowd sold and raised 150 million US dollars worth of, of uh, DAO tokens. And then, um, and then uh, the DAO was hacked on the 17th of June. Uh, uh, last year, last 2016. year, yeah, 2016, and 50 million um, dollars worth of um, tokens were stolen. So, uh, yeah, actual fact, it was the DAO AO tokens that were stolen. Yes, and then that that leaked some of you know, and and that that created a, that created a big loss for people. Yes, it did. But also the community actually, um, you know, there was a little bit of division there because, and a lot of discussion, uh, whether they'd actually go for a hard fork or a soft fork. And um, just tell us a little bit about hard fork and soft fork, Peter. Well, what, what this means is that, um, you know, a fork in the, in the or, or change, a change in the software, the core software program of Ethereum or any cryptocurrency or, or a blockchain ledger means that there are now two versions of that ledger. That's why it's called a fork. So one is the left version and one is the right version. And um, so, so uh, they split the, 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 what they basically did is they decided to, to change the software and backdate things to actually uh, uh, give the stolen money back to, um, to the people that, you know, you know, that were supposed to own it. But then of course, um, uh, there was a lot of people that were unhappy about this because you know, real um, blockchain um, uh, purists didn't want to see a fork because they believed that, you know, you should just carry on with, with what, that, what, what, what was there before. Otherwise, you start interfering with the blockchain. And then um, they decided to carry on with a pre-fork version of Ethereum uh, called um, Ethereum Classic. And now we have two Ethereum um, uh, Currencies. One is called ETH, which is Ethereum, the short code, and the other one is ETC, which is Ethereum Classic. And both of them, both of them trades on uh, cryptocurrency exchange, exchanges. Yes. And um, you know, so that's very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. And uh, you know, since then, there's been two more forks uh, in the fourth quarter of 2016 because um, it seems to be that um, that there's a lot of attacks that still take place, but they are actually really, really getting good in blocking them. I think this is the problem that we're going to have with any um, uh, new software that comes out in all aspects of, of of software development, you know, is hackers trying to destroy software. So you constantly get attack on systems, on networks. We just saw British Airways the other day had gone down for a day without yes. any, no flights could take off because of, a, you know, a software glitch. Yes. So um, um, this is normal in any software company. And... Um, the guys are working hard to, to, to secure the network. And the fact that the Ethereum survived all of these attacks is really also bullish news for, for the blockchain and the network. Very, very much so. And also, you know, developers are really, really attracted to Ethereum. They seem to really enjoy the, the sandbox um, called Ethereum Virtual Machine. Well, the reason is they can very, it's very easy to develop apps. You, you don't, you, you know, there's a lot of um, pre-given stuff that's given to you. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities in the financial services market and all that markets yes. with um, Ethereum apps. Yes. And also one of the things that we've been seeing lately is all these initial coin offerings that are coming through. Well, what happens is um, initial coin offering is a way where people actually now, these days when they have a company or a startup and they want to raise capital, instead of selling shares, they create a virtual token and they sell this virtual currency. And uh, Ethereum blockchain is very popular to do, um, to write these new currencies on and then to do initial coin offering, um, which means you offer some coins in the beginning for guys, uh, for, 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 you know, for fiat money or, or whatever, um, you know, for a certain amount. And then um, uh, they get an ownership in the company or they get products or something. And um, ultimately, that's a way to raise money for the company.
Yes, and um, and definitely start a crowd sale to fund the project. Absolutely. Those are, those are gaining in popularity. Okay, then the other exciting thing that happened uh, in February 2017 was the, the launch of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. Um, and it's actually a non-profit donation-based system. That's very interesting, yes. And, uh, you know, there's some big companies involved. Um, we can just go through them here. First of all, um, you know, some of the companies that are involved are British Petroleum, uh, JP Morgan, the banking giant. Um, Microsoft, as we all know, is a programming uh, software developer. Uh, there's an Indian IT consultancy called Wipro, very big company. Merck, which is a, a pharmaceutical company. Samsung, as we all know, who, who make uh, smartphones and all kinds of other products. Toyota, no, no um, introduction needed there. Deloitte, Deloitte is a consultancy firm and an accounting firm, one of the big four. Infosys and uh, the National Bank of Canada. So, you know, this is a major list of people getting involved in this um, uh, Ethereum um, Enterprise Alliance. Yes, and certainly very, very bullish. Um, and also, there are just so many uh, companies that are joining all the time. So, in fact, just the other day, there was another 86 that were joined uh, to the list. Yeah, we're obviously not reading the whole list. We just, um, you know, this, this, these are some of the major ones. Yes. But, yeah, and this is growing. So, this Enterprise Alliance. So. Uh, Ethereum has definitely got some fundamentals speaking for it now because of all this corporate backing. And now um, we have actually seen Ethereum growth in value just take off in 2017. I mean, we're looking at a graph here that has got a one hang, hang of an incline. So what happens with Ethereum is, like we said, it's a, it's a computing system, but it also it has its own cryptocurrency linked to it called Ether. And uh, these uh, charts really gives you the process of the ether tokens. And um, yeah, it's grown in value tremendously. Um, a lot of this is also um, because of speculation and, uh, you know, because of the rise in the Bitcoin price. And uh, people are looking for the new big thing um, after Bitcoin. And I think, you know, Ethereum is definitely up there. And um, But it's going to be interesting to see um, what's going to happen over time. I think um, they must still but there'd be a tremendous growth potential in Ethereum um, and its applications. So that is a bullish sign. Yes, very, very bullish. So in actual fact, Ethereum is definitely proving to be very, very resilient. And yeah, I mean, because of all these attacks and everything, and, and you know, Ethereum prices went, went as low as $8 or even lower. It went under $10. And um, now it's back to over 300 today. So that's, you know, and, and, and the developers have kept on supporting it right through this DAO um, but debacle and everything um, has been fixed and um, it's looking very, very rosy. Yes. And of course, the business support, which we've just spoken about. Um, and actually, the, the value and the market cap has just grown to over $31 billion, US dollars. Yeah, that's amazing, you know. The, so... Ethereum is another cryptocurrency that's becoming mainstream. And um, the use of Ethereum by, by software companies and by, by corporations gives it a little bit of an edge over any other cryptocurrency. So definitely um, happy days for Ethereum at the moment. Yes, very much so. So Peter, um, any more questions about Ethereum? Uh, well, if you guys have any more questions, you know what to do. You know, um, join our free uh, community and uh, we will give you uh, Ethereum uh, education. So uh, go to the below this video. Please, please go subscribe to our YouTube channel. That will give you direct insight to what we're doing. We're going to make more videos on Ethereum shortly. Uh, we'll discuss um, all aspects of the currency. It's one of your projects. Um, go to our Facebook page. Go like but be there. Go to our blog. Get onto your mailing list. And um, also, we are also now on Instagram and SoundCloud. Um, and please uh, download the Bitmedia app. All those links, all 5,000 of them are in our description of the video <laughs> below. Just go look for them. <laughs> okay, thank you, Peter. We'll talk again soon. We'll talk again later. Ciao, ciao. Cheerio.